That's right, people. It's another Tuesday of the Bashi Beja podcast. This your boy DJ Mitz Master Mike for Party Block TV. <laughs> Don't forget April 16th. Stop. Sorry, April 15th, 2023. We got Stop. this man right here, Chief what? Ding. Live okay. in Canada. What we tell him, Ding? 24 7, I just look for my own bird. Priorities come first. A billion is my aim. I have to get it once I don't dead. I had to seek some work. Unless I knew I was a chief from birth. If I do wrong, my mother used to be uncursed. Life is for living, and those who want to see me dead won't live to see me underneath the dirt. So every day I try to get my money so long. What comes wrong goes wrong. I just feel miserable anytime I just slow down. What is it? Never boasts now. All right, then. My mind, that's why I have to get it. I focus on cash. I don't fancy credit. Any amount I have, I know how to stretch it. Top form records is the best. I said it. What? And them looking for me to push violence. I kill them, but silence them can't see the tyrant in me. As long as I live on this island, my face of a whole is a small part when they're looking for me to push violence i kill them but silence them can't see the tyrant in me as long as i live on this island my face i will always keep a small part pretends strictly positive i'm preaching right now when people are seeking was a learner no way teaching yeah people this is episode deficient number four is good i reach and plant to see them do they repent thanks to everybody who is checking you know i lock on I gotta try to do the thing live sometimes, you know. I'm just trying to get the, 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 the formula together, like how we gonna do the video, how you do the pictures, how you gonna do the, the audio, make sure everything clean and good for them, you know what I mean? Tonight we gonna touch by some women. <laughs> That's all good, no? <laughs> A billion is my aim. We can talk to us, uh, we may, you know, I find out what's going on. Some work seizure, I knew it was a chief from birth. If I do wrong, my mother, you because I can't understand sometimes what's been going on. So we can ask a women what's going on. One left to see me underneath the dirt. I said, every day I try to get my money so long. I just feel miserable anytime I did just slow. Down. Also, don't forget, money from my money. March 18th. We got hyper mental birthday bash going down. There, Scarba. <laughs> Big up blessed promotions huh? and Pony Block TV. Bring it that one to one and Chief Ding Tour. Going down right there inside of. <laughs> Class Rest Tour Lounge, 1111 Barmat Drive, huh? North York. We in the West. West side. Just <laughs> we just waited for the women to get ready, you know what I mean? And then we can make this thing happen. Father, watch over me. Oh, me, oh, my, don't care with them. Them can't see me die. That we have myself when fools are wrong. If you're looking for money, that means you use a clown. When hurdles in my way, if I can't get two of them, I kick them down and move along. Never instigate the use to do no wrong. I love the winner rhythms and do not use no bum. I must worry someday. I don't suck up the people. I have patience like Junior Gong. I'm on a half floor studying people. like don't even answer. You're Concentrated for my cash flow. To me, you are out there to let her ask for. I never want to do a shot to use the next door. All of the negative energies I let go. Was always not here from the get go. Stay far from bad minded people. Hold them get so. Take away my son. Take away my son. Just take away my son. Yes, 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 yes. We got a caller on the line. We got a caller on the line. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? We good. We good. We good. We outside. You know what I mean? 
know what I mean? We just nice. chilling here. You know, we ain't gonna mention the names on on the Bashi Bajan podcast tonight, nor nothing. So you understand? So you ain't gonna give a name nor nothing. But we we just wanna know some things. You understand? We just wanna know a few things. All right. What do you wanna so, know? So as a man, right? And you're living with a woman and thing. Why is it that the toilet paper does get used up so much by women? Well, women are just maybe cleaner. I don't know. We don't want to get our hands dirty, I guess. But but why so much toilet paper? Well, we toilet use toilet paper, paper for toilet everything. Toilet paper is one thing that do not last in a house with a woman. Like, when in a house with a woman, the first thing to go is the toilet paper. How much toilet yeah, paper? How but, much toilet paper is doing this get through roughly on a house in, in one week? I mean, I don't know. Sixty rolls will last my house like two months at least. Six, six, zero, sixty yeah. rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty rolls. Sometimes like two and a half. When sometimes two and a half, but it, it depends. It, it depends on who, who's in your house and and what's going on. In- But we we use toilet paper for everything. Don't get it twisted. But if we it, if we can it, use it, we're using it. When it's roll off, enough to when when it's just wiping, you know. When it's just wiping, when it's roll off, like rat when I had like four times before when I wipe. We ain't getting our hands dirty. <laughs> That's to protect the fingernails and everything. You got rat all you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when you think about it, like, you really want to scratch your ass to nail? I don't think so. Wait, wait, wait. So, you trying to tell me toilet paper does get used to protect fingernails, too? Yes, it does. Wow. Toilet paper was just to, like, wipe yourself, make sure you clean it yourself, but it's to protect fingernails. What else? We use it for makeup. We use it for cleaning up. Bills, all kinds of things. Okay, so what happened with like um the bulky, the bulky uh quick to pick up a. I mean, towel. you got bounty in the you got bounty in the kitchen, but the, you're not necessarily gonna have bounty if you gotta clean up a quick spill or something. You you grabbing toilet paper. So that means you're not buying a cheap toilet paper. Eh? No, you can't buy that two ply shit. You have to buy four ply. Okay, okay, okay. Should I roll over my car? <laughs> Wait, you it, never know. In case you got to do a number two? <laughs> you, number two, you got to clean up a spill. You got to fix your makeup, your crying, everything. Ah, you got to have it. Good thing you mentioned crying. Why are women so emotional all the time? I mean, you have. Why you say that? Some women, some women are more emotional than others. That's true. But usually, the vast majority of women does be emotional over all things. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, don't it, don't take it for granted because not. Uh, I'm not one to to get emotional over certain things, but I mean, I guess it depends on the guy that you're with on how emotional you are. Because I mean, let's keep it real: dudes can do some pretty stupid shit and make you emotional over it. Was it was the one thing a dude do, do to you that that made you very emotional and, and send you crazy? Mm, I wouldn't say emotional, but I mean like. If I text you and you don't don't reply like that, that gets me pretty irked. That, that gets me how, how how long you get the person to reply when you text them? Let me hear this one. Well, I mean, if I text you in the morning, and I still ain't hear from you in the nighttime. Like then then we got an issue. That's a that's an understandable time frame. But I I'm not More like I'm not expecting I I'm not expecting you to to reply like you know 10 seconds later but like 
it, if you keep it real, if I haven't heard from you in like three, four hours, then I'm like, okay, what the fuck? You you left me on red or you left me on delivered. Like that, that's not cool. At yo, that point, I, I'm not texting back. Somebody should be that there the other day. Like, all right. She talked about she period. I was like, so lost. But no, you said it. I, it no click to me. What you mean? Like on red, yes. like, like two ticks. <laughs> Like, I, I don't play with stuff like that or, like, you know, if, if you say you're going to be somewhere, you're going to do something and you don't do it, nah, that I, I don't play that game. I, I'm I'm loyal to a fault, and if I say I'm going to do something, I... Oh, 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 we lost the call. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Sorry for that. That was my... We got about... Oops. Sorry about that. My hand slipped there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's my bad. That's all right. I'm loyal to a fault. So if you're going to something, best do it. Because if you don't, then we're going to have issues. We're going to have problems. So, what's the next question now we the ladies them? Uh, my listener has been so faded with it. The Tuesdays has come around so fast, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, in COVID time, you're locked up in the house with your partner. How hard was that for you in COVID time, being locked in the house with somebody? Um, I can say it wasn't really that hard. I mean, it depends on who you're with and what your relationship is like. So, I mean, if you have a good, solid relationship, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't really affect it. But I understand, like during COVID, there was a lot of stuff that happened and a lot of people that couldn't uh, couldn't function because they're not used to being around their significant other that long. So, I mean, I was I I was okay. I didn't have no issues, but. Other people I know did, and uh, they're not together anymore. So that's just how it goes. But you you have to uh, you have to work through your issues. You have to work through your problems. You have to talk it out. Well, the people then break up. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them did. Wow. I mean, I have quite a few sets of friends that uh, that broke up, and I mean, some were for the better, and some were they're like really uh, over something so tiny, like fix it. You know, don't don't just walk away. Like, I mean, in a relationship, if something can be fixed, then fix it. But if if you try to do everything you can to fix it, it's still not fixable. Then then that's when you walk away. But don't just give up so easy. Yeah, I've been I've been giving my friends like proper advice lately, just telling them, yo, I mean, don't move so fragile over things. Uh huh. You know. And, and I mean, obviously emotions are running high during COVID because it's not something that's easy to go through. But, you know, and a lot of people were losing jobs and a lot of people couldn't work and things like that. But when, when you go through it on like a whole different level, because, you know, maybe somebody's sick or somebody can't work in the home or, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to function or trying to change jobs like it's the same type of thing. You just have to sit down, talk about it, and work it out. You can't just make a move and think like, okay, it's going to be good for everybody. You got to make the move and make the move with your partner. You can't just go and then hope to God they follow. No, you got to go together. That's how how a relationship should go. True, true. So, how is this like whole gender transition thing that's going around affect? Well, the like children, the say, children starting to understand this thing, or I, I myself don't even understand this thing. Um, I, I see somebody on TV the other day identify as a piece of broccoli. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, my kids came home and they're they're telling these kids are identifying as animals at school and playing in the litter box, and I'm like, huh, what? <laughs> And the sandbox at school is just litter box. And I'm like, okay, no, like that's, that's gross. Like that's disgusting. Like we're not animals. We're people. 
Um, and, and I mean, my oldest, yeah, she she gets it. She understands it a lot better than I do because I mean, I come from a time where, you know, okay, yeah, you got women dating women, men dating men. Like, okay, but is the way it really is? It's like it should be man and woman, not <laughs> not any and that kind of from and I I still strongly believe it but I also believe you can't can't help who you love so I'm not going to fault you for it I'm not going to throw it in your face but at the same time you know it is what it is I I, I understand I even had a conversation with my son at the last night like I was like wow like he's like a lot of things being pushed in the direction and then thrown upon the other direction but the other direction does the direction that things is supposed to go in so if yeah. that being frowned upon and the other narrative being pushed i find a problem with that yeah like i, I mean i don't a problem with I, I don't believe that uh the school should push any type of uh sexuality on on the kids but i mean they from what I find, they are are learning other things like that. They I don't think they should be learning. I don't think that it's it's okay for them to say, okay, well here's here's the anatomy, and you know, oh, it's okay to go and, and deal with a girl, or it's okay to go and deal with somebody that identifies as a cat, or you, you know, like those things are wrong. And I I strongly yeah. believe that uh, that it if they were you know back in Barbados or in the Caribbean, they would find it very different um, because I, those things are they're frowned upon there. So. I, know, I know it gets a long time, decades even, before Barbados or any other place identify people other than what they actually are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't live like that in the Caribbean, boy. I don't know any place in the Caribbean right now that people identify it other than a male or a female yes so. i i mean i was i i was just watching a video with with my husband and like he's from grenada and they were talking about uh these two men and they're like out there flamboyantly and like it was so frowned upon like they were getting beat and i i don't, don't understand like this this is not normal and you know that being in a country like that, you're going to get beat. You're you're not going to end up alive. Like that's why they hide so much in Jamaica and Barbados, Trinidad, you know, places like that. Dominican, they're not out in the open, and it, it you Barbados, have to really go look. Barbados people out in the open. Don't get twisted with that. People out in the open with the with the. I guess more so, more. Yeah, definitely you know, more so now. Yeah. More so now because what happening is a lot of tourists hitting the island. So you can you can got a lot of tourists that is that type of it. So you know that a whole man Barbados and he was identifying as a horse and he was dressed as a horse. <laughs> wow! But I look at it as like a, uh, a comedian type thing. You know what I'm saying? But he did well, look at it as a, a lifestyle. Just I guess, yeah, at that point, comedy. it would be to me. Yeah, because he was even like on the race track, horse racing, that thing. But this is where we live in. People not paying it like. I see, like, like little small news clips about China reacting to how the US fly over fly over China and stuff. That's a serious thing, you know. Yeah, it definitely that's is. A, it's not something that's, that's a, small. That's a, that's a big war if and it gets sure surprise is. people if Shing move from that. I see I see that man launch um China. Imagine if that was a nuclear one, that would be crazy. That's not it. I mean, the things that they're shooting down out of the sky is absolutely crazy. 
when it comes to, to anything. Like, I mean, they're shooting down these white things that are in the sky. Um, it's unreal. It's, it's like definitely balloons. not a war, and that's for sure. I hear them as like balloons. Yeah, it's a, some no, type no, of a $12, balloon. Twelve dollar balloons that people have been setting up to like look at certain things on the earth. That's absolutely crazy. I haven't really had a chance too far into it because I was like, "Oh, they're shooting them down." Here we go. Um, it was a news report that they shoot some sort of missile that cost must be about three hundred thousand for the missile. Wow. To shoot out a, a, a $12 balloon on this guy. And then, I'm like, how can they not know what it is before they shoot at it? That's crazy. There's no way to know what it is that they're shooting at, what that technology that thing must have got. Heat detectors and all kind of thing and uh, cameras that hitting from the floor as long as you can see it when you eye from the the land they got cameras that you could hit that from so whoever sent them out to shoot that over there already could like get a camera and look as is before they send something to shoot that though well yeah they definitely should have they could even launch something off the plane that's shooting it down to see right, what is going on or what it is. Even that. You know what that coming as to me? That coming as to me like one of the situations where, when the police were like going to shoot somebody. The police got tasers. Instead of using the taser, they could use the gun. Yep. So They do. They definitely, they definitely take it a step too far, I, I believe. Especially when it comes to police brutality and uh, different uh, races and religions, they take things way out of context before they can kind of know what's going on. I got, I get caught up in something like that in Bradford a couple of years ago, and it was so crazy. The guy profiled me to a T when he was following me to when he get to my car to the point where he put handcuffs on me because he he the feel disrespected because I the tell him he don't know what the hell he doing <laughs> and I ask him you sure you really want to do this you sure you really want to go down this road with me tonight and when he had to release me all the handcuffs I was like you see you waste my time and your time yeah a hundred percent. At that point, you're wasting time for sure. There's no, because they don't take the time to see what's actually going on in the world. They just react. They don't um, actually check before they run their mouth on their, their handcuffs because they feel big and bad right behind their uh, their gun and their badge. The man, was, the man was following me for about 10 minutes. You understand? Telling me that he suspect me of drinking and driving. So when he come to the car, I said, "What was the reason for the stop?" You understand? Before you can say anything, ask me for anything. What's the reason? Oh, I suspect you of drinking and driving. All you gotta do is, is provide a breathalyzer. This is what he tell me. You know, all I gotta do is provide a breathalyzer test. Do one, and it could be on my way. That's what asking me for anything. You know, so really, I truly, he had no cause to stop me. You understand? Yeah, he, no, at that know point, it. he doesn't. He know it, because that's why he couldn't ask me for nothing. Because all I say when he get to the window is, what's the reason for the start today? And that that kind of, like, threw you off balance. Like, you just expected that. You just expected, like, he did something. You understand? Yeah. But from when I start talking, he's like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that one. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's something they're not waiting for. And that was so crazy. This, this uh, we've time. we've seen things like that too. I mean, we were we were stopped probably about oh, I want to say a month ago, and uh, they came, you know, 
busting at us with four cop cars, cop cars pulling up on the all around the vehicle and checking everybody's ID. And I'm like, excuse me, what were we doing? And like somebody had followed um, my husband back to our house and, you know, tried to tell the cop where we were and they came speeding. And I mean, why? And all because, you know, it's a black man driving a nice vehicle. So why? You, you want to racially profile us because you think we stole the car? No, we didn't steal the car. So it was a big deal. And we had like three other people in the car with us. And, you know, they're asking for everybody's ID and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, okay, hold on. First of all, I'm not the driver of the vehicle. I don't have to give you my ID. I don't have to give you anything. I said, but I'm going to comply and I'll give you my name. Hmm. I said, but my ID will not come out of my pocket. And he's like, you can't tell me. I said, but yes, I can because I'm not the driver. Yeah, they, they, it's just crazy. They usually do that there to see if you got warrants. Yeah, and they checked everybody in the car and nothing came back. This crazy, but they don't usually got no problem calls to stop you. Now they got that technology thing running on the street now. Whereas when you when, yeah. you, when you drive past them, it, it just dings off and say like if you registered or not. Yeah, they got the cameras. They have they actually have one. Uh, we are mm-hmm. that has it, and I saw it the other day. And if I that cop car looks big and bad. Mm. It's big and bad is understatement. It's, uh, it really scares you when you see it. Oh, God. Is everything, you know, legit? Am I okay? Or am I going to get pinned off? But you want to know, know the funny thing about it? Out of all the people, all the 10 people that passed that, nine of them ain't going to be legit. So they can't go after everybody. That's right. But there's uh, like five other people done past them same thing but it's a good tool for them to make some money oh yeah it will definitely make them money 100 percent. but at the same time because whoever fight them tickets it could be like overloading the court system and a lot of their things get tossed out of court but you just, oh, 100%. So you're just saying that you're gonna fight that i know in the court system for traffic it, it's crazy well, and and whoever going to pay at copper and all them people there the chain of the money people coming in there and pleading guilty on your behalf that's right <laughs> they're pleading guilty i get you less a charge but they ain't doing nothing for you please nope. not guilty and that's take you get through the court but they're gonna plead guilty and lower your thing to like if you had like six points, lower it down to three, and and get you a fine, and that's it. Nah, right, and most of the, most of the time, you I mean you can plead not guilty, and then the cop has to show up, and the cop doesn't have time to show up to the courthouse, so exactly. you're you're gonna get off anyway. So why pay them? Well, that's things that people don't know. Like that was my my first response. Like when I was in an, I don't know, eleven years ago, and they tried to say I was at fault. I said no because I didn't go on the red light, and uh, literally, I said no, no, it's you. And the call came to me, and the nurse that had hit me, you're uh, you're the silent. Anything you say or do can be used against you. Me, I said, hold on, sir. I like. You and I, I'm going to decide what's going to happen. And well, three days later, he came back and charged me. And mm. I said, okay, it's the court and I'm going to fight it. And I went and I got the signal timings and all of that stuff from the city. And I said, there's a light camera there because the hospital. And they knew that if I had gone on the road. So... They uh, off on it, and I told you. So try and tell me that I'm the one at fault here. So to say and what to do because don't just bow bow down to the 
police law, I guess you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Just uh, take a stand. Well. On here. That's all yes, the time definitely. You have to and uh, if you have the Bashi Bajan podcast. Yes, definitely. And thank you very much for your input. You're we'll welcome. probably hear you like, again soon, you know what I mean? 100%. Uh, Always your support. All right. Much all love. Right. Have a good night. Much love to you too. Yes, people. That's the Bashi Bajan podcast. You know, it's a good as we hear it's a good feedback. Sick and tired of the, the police doing a lot of non the people sick and tired of all of these things being pushed on regular people and we just gotta accept it. We're just sick and tired. You know what I mean? Looks and you know, you just live life, have fun. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. Yes, people. <laughs> Chief Ding. Going to be here in Canada, April 15th. <laughs> Firm Master This is the last one we are going to play tonight to let me all of the play. We got the biggest and and the silence of Yeah, understand. Post so understand. Post so understand. Post so